today I'm going to talk to you about the most successful fundraising appeal ever. But first, let's consider what author Mark Twain told us. He said, there is no such thing as a new idea. It is impossible. We simply take a lot of old ideas and put them into a sort of mental kaleidoscope. We give them a turn and they make new combinations. We keep on turning and making new combinations indefinitely, but they are the same old pieces of colored glass. I'm not sure I agree entirely with this. As fundraisers, we do need to believe that new and exciting initiatives are waiting to be discovered, which will result in lots of money being raised for the causes we believe in. However, what I think we can take from this is that past fundraising ideas have shaped the fundraising we do today, and we mustn't be so preoccupied with looking forward that we forget to learn from our past. So with that in mind, let me take you back to 1939. 1939 the year Batman first appears in a comic book. John Steinbeck's novel, The Grapes of Wrath, is first published. The Wizard of Oz premieres in Hollywood. The last public guillotining in France is carried out. And the year that Germany invades Poland and the Second World War breaks out in Europe. It was also the year that the British Red Cross and St. John launched their war appeal, which went on to become the UK's most successful fundraising appeal ever. So how did it work? All over the UK, the Red Cross asked people to give just one penny a week, the equivalent of around 50p a week today. The idea was that this small amount would be almost unnoticeable to the supporter. However, when given regularly, over a period of time and by many thousands of people, it would add up to a considerable sum. Pennies were collected each week by volunteers going from door to door. The collections required a new Act of Parliament, the House to House Collections Act of March 1940. The Act required that collectors ha had to be fit and proper persons, wore identification badges, carried a certificate of authority, and had to place all the money in a sealed collecting tin. It might not sound groundbreaking to us now, but this paved the way for face-to-face -face fundraising as we know it today. When launching the Penny a Week Fund, the Red Cross and St. John engaged the Trades Union Congress to deduct a penny a week from workers' wages. A postal appeal was made to employers and employees, and each organisation supporting the scheme was allocated a Red Cross contributions representative to act as the link between the employer and the workers, the precursor to payroll giving. Incredibly, in 2012, £118 million was donated through payroll giving in the UK which is a mere 34% of what the Penny a Week Fund collected annually during the war years. In addition to the Penny a Week regular giving, 350 charity shops were opened to benefit the fund. Stocks were made up entirely of donated items, and the phenomenon of chain charity shops was born. What I love about the appeal is that so many people were involved in a collective movement. Lots of people were contributing a little amount, doing something incredible, which would only have been possible together because the whole was greater than the sum of its parts. This works because one penny doesn't mean a lot to Joe Bloggs, but lots of pennies from lots of Joe Bloggs can mean an awful lot to the beneficiaries, whoever they might be. As was written in the Red Cross newsletter in 1943, the intrinsic worth of a penny is not very great, but when added to another and another and another, from the pockets and purses and pay packets of millions of willing subscribers from all walks of life, it achieves a great significance. In this case, that great significance was helping those affected by the Second World War. Donations paid for emergency medical relief, blankets, food and clothing, and weekly food parcels for prisoners of war, bringing them hope and comfort when they were so far away from home. Tangible items like these are still fundraising gold today. The reason I think the appeal was so successful is because of its relevance to everybody. The world was at war, but the impact was being felt on a very local level. Every single person in the country was like to have a, likely to have a brother, father, husband or friend called up to fight. Knowing that those loved ones would be the ones to benefit from the fund made donating very personal. A challenge we often find with the fundraising we do is making it relevant to the supporter. The Red Cross and St John didn't have to bring the cause to its supporters' backyards. It was already there. But by using messaging such as we see here, help us to help him, they were able to capitalise on the public's personal connection in the knowledge that he represents that person that they care about. I said that this was the most successful fundraising appeal ever, and so I'd better quantify that. 
By 1946, the appeal had raised over 54 million pounds. That is the equivalent of 7.7 .7 billion pounds today, making it the largest char charitable fund ever raised in the UK. As I said at the beginning, past fundraising ideas have shaped the fundraising we do today. In 1939, thousands of people were inspired to make small donations, which collectively helped those affected by the war. Right now, thousands of people are making small donations, which collectively are helping those affected by the conflict in Gaza. Both appeals allow the public to express their solidarity with people whose lives have been torn apart by war. The DEC's Gaza appeal may be in different times, but the principles of fundraising remain the same. So aside from all the money, why was this fundraising initiative so exceptional that it made me want to stand up here today and say, I wish I'd thought of that? Well, during a time of emotional and financial strain, and with the feelings of uncertainty about the future that the war brought, it hardly seems like an ideal time to launch an innovative and pioneering fundraising appeal. However, the need was there, so the Red Cross and St. John were not deterred. Their efforts led to what was described as the greatest act of collective generosity and changed the face of fundraising forever. So I think we can all take something from this. Be bold, be brave, and think big, because you might just achieve something exceptional. Thank you. Thank you.